there would be so much of content already produced by AI that inevitably the next AI would be trained on the products of the previous AI and it would turn essentially the whole culture into a huge garbage dump. Greetings, this is Eugene the Philosopher, the greatest living philosopher after the unfortunate passing of Quentin Robert de Nameland, who has been the greatest living philosopher before me. Let's talk about AI once more, and it's once uh, again one of these uh, old man yelling at cloud type of videos, alright? But before we talk about AI, I'm gonna give you a sort of a metaphor. And believe me, like it will make sense, well hopefully at least, alright? So, some years ago, in the Russian political internet, like when it became clear that uh, Putin would become uh, a president once more and would stay in power for many, many more years to come, some creative people have uh, created like a public, think about it as like a Facebook uh, public, even though it was VK.com, not Facebook, uh, which was called something like uh, Putin every day or something like that, you know, picture of Putin every day. So what they had was uh, literally just a picture of Putin but every day they would download it, sort of like re, uh, how would you call it, re reprocess it, like rescale it, like I don't know, re recompress it, I guess, and re upload again. And then next day they do the same. And so they post the same picture, but uh, sort of like reprocessed every day, like re, um, again, uh, not rescaled, like whatever, reprocessed, let's put it this way, right? Like, like re JPEGed. Uh, and obviously the quality would deteriorate each time you're doing that, right? And so at some point, like half a year later, it became like almost completely black. Like the, the, it was unintelligible what was uh, imaged there. And so like the, the, the sort of the idea, the creative idea behind it was to show people like how crooked and warped things become when a certain person stays in power for very long, right? You get the same crap every day but it becomes kind of worse and worse and worse and i think it was a beautiful thing so let's talk about ai now uh why why did i uh, tell you this story uh well you see the thing is i'm sp uh, talking specifically about the creative ai you know the, the ai I mean, AI in air quotes, right? Watch my video about AI in the first place. But um, uh, the AI that is supposedly like uh, writing something, uh, let's say music or texts or making images, that kind of stuff, even videos maybe, right? This is what I'm talking about. Uh, so it's trained on actual like human, uh, human produced material, if that's uh, even an expression. But the thing is, like they, they, Percentage of all the content, again, watch my video about content, professions that don't, don't exist, I called it. Um, so the, the amount of stuff produced by AI obviously increases exponentially, right? And it takes more and more of the market share, so to speak, in, of, of the creative content in the first place. So at some point, we will reach a point, no pun intended, where like, there will be more AI stuff than actual human-made stuff, right? And what it would create, at least potentially, I mean, obviously, people can, like, like these engineers, they might deliberately make a choice whether, allow, whether to allow it or not. However, we may still reach a point where newly created AI or newly trained AI programs would be, become trained on old AI content. You see where I'm going with this? And we'll kind of arrive at this, uh, what the French philosophers have called simulacrum, right? Basically, a copy of a copy, right? So, something artificial on top of something already artificial. Uh, so, AI will start learning on other AI, and we'll, we'll have like something horrific completely, right? <laughs> like it's, it's not very hard already to distinguish like AI produced content from actually human-made content. I mean, at least if you have some taste, you can see it pretty easily. Uh, so, um, uh, one could only wonder in a bad, <laughs> in a bad way, what would happen when the next stage happens, when again, the, the AI content inflates so much that it takes, uh, like the majority of, of, of the market. And therefore, the next AI would become trained on the previous AI's generated content, right? So we, we will arrive at this horrific 
postmodernistic hellscape, you know, this again, land of simulacre, simulacra, um, uh, yeah, this is basically what I'm talking about in this video. This is the main idea, is that I think the main danger of AI to culture is basically this, is the potential of turning the whole culture into basically a huge garbage dump. When, roughly speaking, you know, something is being produced, then it's being, roughly speaking, consumed, then it's being, roughly speaking, excreted, but then it get, gets consumed again, and excreted again, and consumed again. And, uh, like, at some point, it just, I mean, already at the second step, it sounds <coughs> not very good, right? This is what I'm talking about, like, the potential of AI to, to uh, sort of turn the whole of culture into a huge garbage dump, where the stuff that has already been bad is now considered good and is recycled again and again and again uh, like it's a very bad situation uh, I would argue at least like of course like maybe somehow some digital signatures would be developed so the new models would not be uh, trained on you know the results of previous models but it's already kind of impossible at this point I mean there's plenty of content that people are claiming to be theirs even though again they've actually used AI um, uh, to make this content or, or at least to assist them in making this content right so be being able to distinguish is becoming harder and harder like let's say if half of my essay was written by a language model right or, or if all of it was written by a language model I just slightly edited it right like how would you distinguish this uh, from actual human, you know, labor in the sense of how would you label it in terms of training the, the next language models, etc., etc. So we're coming to this age where, where again, like th this is a legit possibility. Like people talk about, you know, the gray goo kind of um, end of the world scenario, but this is like the actual physical, you know, like nanorobots kind of recycling everything into themselves, right? Uh, this is what the gray goo is. But I think we're coming to the point where the gray goo in digital sense is actually possible, where basically everything would be produced uh, by a language model at some point. Uh, and like, but once again, I stress that I, I don't have anything against it per se. What I have against, what I have a lot against rather, is that the quality is being reduced at, the, at each step of this recyclement, uh, recycling process, right? Just like the quality of picture of Putin gets decreased and the quality of, uh, you know, governance in Russia gets decreased every day, pretty much, for the very same reason, just because it's the same recycling process, the same sort of Uroboros, you know, kind of, well, another good metaphor, right? Uh, or Uroboros, like however you pronounce it in English. Yeah. Maybe I'll call it Uroboros of AI or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but this is the main idea that when the next, uh, let's say, when the next age language models would become trained, there would be so much of content already produced by AI that inevitably the next AI would be trained on the products of the previous AI and it would turn essentially the whole culture into a huge garbage dump. Yeah. Let's hope this doesn't happen, but I don't think, I don't see any reason for it not to happen, honestly. Except maybe when the stock market bubble of AI would burst. But that's a whole separate discussion. Again, here I'm mostly talking about culture per se. Thank you for watching. The eons are closing. If you wish to support me, please consider joining my Patreon, that is patreon.com slash philosopher, see the link in the description. Or if you have a scientific theory of your own and you'd like my help in developing it, please join my alternative science coaching program, also available through Patreon.